Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. Fairford is a town with an unusual history and a church of such interests as to be a fitting place to relaunch our travels. It suffers from one, and it seems to me only one, real difficulty. The road that runs through it on its way to Sirencester was built for an occasional horse and carriage and not for 21st century traffic. It's extremely narrow in the middle of the town and it creates a slight sense of unease to the pedestrian. However, please don't let this put you off a visit. The square, just off the main road, is a peaceful place with two ancient hostelries next to one another, the George and the Bull, of which Evans wrote in 1905, these two inns together form one of the most striking pictures in Fairford. Standing as they do side by side in one long line, they occupy one whole side of the main street, just where it is at its widest. These days, there is an extremely friendly cafe at the end of this line to add to its attractions. Evans also notes with horror how the roof of the bull had recently been retiled with grey slate rather than the local stone, something he found deeply offensive. But it's the church that is Fairford's most exciting asset. It's home to one of the greatest collections of medieval stained glass in the whole of the United Kingdom. There are 28 windows displaying biblical scenes and narratives of extraordinary beauty. The church itself was rebuilt at the end of the 15th century by one John Tame and his son Edmund. They were wool merchants based in Sirencester, and whilst they kept most of the original perpendicular tower, they completely redesigned the rest of the church and commissioned the glass from a Flemish glassmaker in Westminster in London. There have been great stories believed for centuries that Tame captured the glass from a Flemish ship bound for Rome with a gift for the Pope, bringing it back to Fairford to decorate his church. But frankly, the idea of this Cotswold wool farmer behaving like a 15th century buccaneer pillaging foreign ships for their spoils, particularly those belonging to his most important national customer, was always a little far-fetched. And now the origin of the glass is much more sensibly established. Barnard Flower, who died in 1517 and was glazier to King Henry VII, is now confidently believed to be its creator. Its survival through the many dark times of iconoclastic destruction Civil War and World War II, however, does involve remarkable stories. It seems that each time unrest threatened the safety of the church, the glass was removed and stored somewhere safe until the danger passed. The first threat in the reign of Edward VI was probably thwarted by the then Lady of the Manor, John Tame's granddaughter, who would certainly have done everything she could to protect the treasures her grandfather had created. On the next occasion, the Civil War, with its armies traipsing through the region, treating the churches with absolute disdain, it seems to have been the efforts of the resident lay rector, William Oldsworth, that saved the glass from inevitable destruction. He removed it from the windows and carefully concealed it until the danger from Essex's dragoons or Ireton's troopers had passed. During the Second World War, Fairford was in the middle of the largest concentration of airfields on the island, including one of its very own, and once again the glass was removed to safety until the conflict was over. Each time this happened, the glass was replaced with some level of inaccuracy, but over the last 15 years, careful and hugely impressive restoration has put it all back in its correct place, and now it's protected by layers of clear, toughened glass. Talking of airfields, Fairford has been the home of the Royal International Air Tattoo, the largest commercial air show in the country, partly because it had one of the longest runways. 
In the late 20th century, that runway was extended even further to allow the base to become the European emergency runway for the Space Shuttle, if ever it should need to touch down in this part of the world. Sadly, as far as I can tell, it never did. I hope you've enjoyed our visit to Fairford. Next time we'll be in Painswick, on the western escarpment of the Cotswold. Just subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when to meet us there. See you soon.